It's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm in central Tokyo running around the park around the Emperor's house. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea. If someone looks out of their office window sometime in the next half hour, you might be lucky enough to catch a glimpse of a 29 year old British guy having a heart attack in the middle of the park. A lot of people often ask me for ideas on things to do around the Tokyo Station area, known as Marunouchi. Because odds are, if you're travelling through Tokyo, it's a district you'll find yourself passing through at some point or another. In this video, we're going to eat, drink and shop our way around in search of 10 things to do. And to assist me in my exploration, I've enlisted the help of a good friend and a former Tokyo resident who claims to be an expert on the local area. Here he comes. Tokyo expert, slowly but surely, sometime today. Good morning, Ryotaro. Good morning, how, are you, how are you doing? Why are we jogging, Ryotaro? Why is this a thing? What are you worried about? This is number one place for jogging in Tokyo. The number one jogging spot in Tokyo? Yes. I, do I look like someone that needs to go jogging? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, clearly, the uh, your belly. Look at that. And the cycle didn't work out at all. Cheers, mate. I must admit, though, there are quite a lot of joggers around here. Why is it so popular? Why is this the place to jog? Well, I mean, obviously, this is one of the nicest parks in right. Tokyo. And also, there's so many offices around here. So before they go to work, they jog first, and then they go to the office to work. Fair enough. I mean, usually, when I come to Tokyo on business, I never do any exercise, because I think, where can I jog? Where can I? <laughs> Get, where that's can I what, jog? Where can I go? That, right? As a result, that's what you got there. But now I've got no excuse. There's actually a part where you can jog and work out. Discovery. So. Dis Discovery, yes. Discovery. Definitely. I do have a pretty good excuse though why I wouldn't work out here and that is getting sweaty and not being able to shower anywhere. There is. There's a place to get, get, get shower. Oh my god, is it the place where we got the shirts from? <laughs> That's right, thanks to the miracle of Japanese convenience, there's a gym next to the park with lockers, bikes, running gear and showers. So you needn't return to your hotel or office drenched in sweat after your early morning run. The Madanorchi bike and run place, in between Tokyo Station and the park, you can actually not only rent shoes and t-shirts, but also have a shower. Much needed after running around the park, it's like 27 degrees Celsius today outside, so... What's going on? What was that? Unpleasantly seductive walking, yeah. brilliant. Whilst Marunouchi may look like a futuristic district of gleaming skyscrapers, underneath it all, place is still firmly rooted in tradition with old red brick buildings dotted around and even a horse and carriage transporting people of importance around town. So this is pretty cool. This is the uh, this is the ambassador of some country. When the ambassador of a country arrives in Japan, they get to go and meet the emperor and have a kind of sit down and a chat. And they get to choose whether they go by car or by carriage and today, this ambassador has chosen to come by carriage, as he would, to be fair. What would you rather do, car or carriage? Obviously carriage. I feel really bad for like, you know, have Chris running from seven o'clock in the morning. So I've got some present for him. And here they are. Ice creams! So this is white chocolate ice cream and there's a Bailey's in it and he's, you know, Chris is half alcoholic anyway, so he'll love this. And there's a corn ice cream, which actually, this is my favorite. And these are the actually best ice cream shops in Tokyo area, Tokyo station area. And uh, here they are. Chris, my love it. Oh, here he comes. What you got? Ooh, uh, look at this. I gave you this one. It's got Baileys in it. Baileys? Yeah, Baileys, that, that Baileys. All right. It could work. So is this actually alcoholic? It is actually. What, how, what I, actually, you know, he said uh, uh, no under 20. No under twenties. Yeah. Oh, mm. No, no, no. Oh. What have you got? What the hell was that? Oh, that was nice. Why would you get corn ice cream when you can have Bailey's ice cream? What's wrong with it? No, it looked good. So they've stuck these statues all around uh, Tokyo Station. Isn't the Rugby World Cup coming in a few months? I suppose that's exactly what people want to see. As amazing as Bailey's ice cream is, unfortunately it's no substitute for a real lunch. And for that, we head to Sapporo Taruzem, a sushi restaurant specialising in fresh fish from Hokkaido. How fresh is it though? Well, they quite literally flew it into Tokyo from Sapporo this morning. Doesn't get much fresher than that. Nice, isn't it? Look at this, beautiful, it's a masterpiece. It's 
So obviously if you're coming around Tokyo Station, there's probably more restaurants around the Tokyo Station area than just about anywhere else in the world. True. Especially given Japan has got, I think Tokyo's got more restaurants than any city in the world. And given the density of this area, you're pretty much we'll love to spoiled eat. for choice. I think my, one of my biggest criticisms of people coming to Japan is they always go to the uh, conveyor belt sushi. Mm, true. Right? And they do that, they tick sushi off their list and then it's job done. That is not real sushi. I can assure you, the fish here is so fresh, it was literally flown in my plane this morning. Caught at like 5 a.m., shipped to Sapporo, flown to Tokyo. And just arrived, brought right just in. Just now. No wonder this, is, this was so good. It's Chris, what happened to your hair, mate? What happened to my hair? It's like everywhere. It's like, you know, this part, this part, it's like... Just Unbelievable, he's made fun of my weight. The cameraman told me that uh, you referred to me as an alcoholic earlier, and now my hair. I, I was looking through some comments on a previous video with Riotto, and everyone was like, oh, leave Riotto alone, you're such a bully to him. He's the real bully. <laughs> He's getting away with murder here, no, no, and no. nobody's calling just, him out on it. I'm just, Why is no, it always I'm just me? I'm the bad guy. I'm just He's the, truth. the bad guy. Look at him, he looks like a low-class bomb villain. We're having fantastic sushi here with a destroyed hair. Like, what kind of... <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> sushi with a destroyed hair. Yeah, exactly. This is the fashion. This is the fashion of London. I didn't know that. I've never seen that in London. You've been in London recently. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going back home to the UK for the first time in about a year. Whenever I go home, my friends and family always hate me because I never have any souvenirs or gifts. Because I, I, shame. Shame I just you. don't have time. I, I usually run through Narita Airport. I don't have time. So this time, I want to do it right. I want to actually get them something good so Proper they gift. appreciate having me as a, as a friend and family member. Yep. So I'm going to hand it over to you. I want three to four things in this shop. I'm happy that you trust on me. <laughs> I don't know if I trust you, <laughs> but let's see what you can come up with. Three All to right. four things. I, I know one of them. This right. is, definitely this is going to be the first one. It's called a Saba Deshu. And Shu means sake, Japanese sake, right? And a Saba means mackerel. Right. So, I mean, you need to drink this when you are eating Mackerel, and that's the only occasion you have to drink this. Seems awfully specific. Um, I don't know how many times my friend and family think, yes. What about like your Let's have some mackerel. Feels a little bit too elaborate, <laughs> so interesting. Good if you're having mackerel, but no. Next thing. Look at this. What is it? This is the, uh, this is a like cream cheese, right? But with miso. <laughs> this is my favorite, actually, cream cheese ever in my life. The whole cream cheese tastes like miso. A bit, miss a flavour uh, to it. That's going in the no pile. Haven't you got something that's a bit more just Japanese? Japanese. Not cream cheese miso, not mackerel sake, actually but, something. Okay, let me okay, let me introduce this one, alright? Alright, this one. Okay. Would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> that's the word all the British people use, you know, when you actually go into someone's house. That's exactly what we say. Exactly. Would you like a cup of tea? Anyway, so um <laughs> uh, look at this. It's a, it's a teapot. So you put some, you know, tea grass in here. Yeah, tea, tea leaf, tea grass. Tea grass. Yeah, in, tea in grass. there, and uh, you just put hot water in, and then wait for a few minutes. That's it. It's ready. I'm pleased to announce you finally found something, Rotary, that actually would go on my list. So yes, yes, yes. All right, you're on thin ice, Rotary. Yes. This is your last and chance. There you go. Guess what this is? A box of wood. No, it's not. <gasps> no, like you do. You, when you drink sake. And um, Japanese people often drink with this one. Right. It's a square wooden, uh, actually, sake cup. So you put the sake in it. Yep. And drink out of it. And this is for me, but for you, this is it. Whoa. This is for wrestlers. And the wrestlers, or like this is for the people with, with bellies. That is a hefty size. <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> All right. Done. Yeah. Well done. OK. This you... is for you. Cheers. I'm not buying, though. Oh. People always ask me for hidden spots, places that people don't know about uh, in Tokyo. This is one of them. This is why I always come for a drink, because I do good craft beer and you can sit outside, which is quite rare in Japan. Yeah, it is quite for rare. For some reason, sitting outside hasn't really been invented in Japan yet. Uh, but this is called Pub Cardinal Madanochi. It's a three minute walk, just three minutes from Tokyo Station, hidden a few blocks away. I'm impressed because Ryotaro doesn't drink alcohol, but he's actually drinking beer. That's not non-alcoholic beer, that's real beer. But I've got a, an American Belgian style pale ale made in Niigata. Whatever that is, yeah. But craft beer is becoming big in Japan recently. It's taken a while to get here. I think Japan's lagged behind Europe and America on this one, but True. they're finally caught up and it's finally kicking off. So yeah, yeah. it's an exciting time for beer in Japan. Since when did you start drinking beer? Today. Now some people may be tired of Japanese food after traveling, you know, from Osaka, Kyoto, Hiroshima, all these places, and come back to Tokyo before flying away back to wherever you're from. 
Um, I guess, you know, this kind of place with the Western food, the beer, and it might be, uh, it helps, huh? Western and food, yeah. So I don't really know my way around Tokyo Station that well, but what I do know is I always seem to stumble across this little garden. This is the Mitsubishi Museum Garden Square. I never know how I get here. I just tend to be lost amongst the skyscrapers and the hustle and bustle of Tokyo. Then I stumble across it, and it is honestly like some sort of oasis in the middle of the city. Tokyo can often feel like a concrete jungle, which makes finding parks and gardens feel like stumbling across some sort of hidden treasure. The Mitsubishi Ichigokar Museum Courtyard is nestled off of one of Mananochi's busiest shopping streets. It's here you can find restaurants, coffee shops, bakeries, and more importantly, and above all, a bit of peace and quiet. It's definitely worth a visit if you find yourself in the Mananochi area. Really nice place to sit, relax, and escape the traffic and chaos of Tokyo. You know, like lunch, like Kaisen, the seafood bowl for mm. lunch and fugu for dinner, how luxury we are. How luxury we are. Yeah, how luxury we it's are. Another t shirt design right there. After a long day, Ryota and I decide to take advantage of Madanochi's towering skyscrapers to enjoy our dinner of fugu blowfish. Fugu is a delicate fish requiring preparation by highly skilled chefs. And with over a hundred years of experience, you're in good hands at Usugi Yamadaya. The restaurant has its origins in Oita Prefecture in Kyushu, which is one of the homes of blowfish in Japan. Ryota and I recently took a trip to nearby Yamaguchi Prefecture to try the dish first hand, but if you can't get down to South Japan or you're looking to try the dish in Tokyo, Uski Yamadaya know how to do the delicious dish justice. Whether it's served up as raw sashimi and presented like a work of art, crisply battered in tempura, or boiled in a hot pot, you're pretty spoiled for choice. So um, we got like deer fried, deer fried fugu and the sashimi fugu, and we're actually waiting for the hot pot of fugu. So fugu itself is Relatively flavourless. Um, it's more about the texture. It's kind of got this kind of chewy texture to it. It all comes to a head once it's dipped into the uh, soy sauce vinegar, ponzu. Uh, that is what unlocks its brilliance because it's just loads of nice vinegar. Mm. Mm. I kind of see fugu as a bit of an art form, the way it's prepared, the way it's sliced up and presented. One thing I haven't tried though is the Pariyagi fugu. Wow. Nice crispy karyage. What do you think? Mm. Compared to... If you're not into raw fish, get it battered. It's like, a bit like fish and chips actually. Mm. It's your favourite? It's my favourite. Because I'm from the UK, it's all we eat, isn't it? That's the only thing you've got there. Good. <laughs> Walking through the streets of the Tokyo Station area, at first, may seem like there's an absence of restaurants and bars. However, you'll quickly discover they're all concealed away in the towers surrounding the area. Perhaps the trendiest of them all is the building immediately in front of the station, the towering Shinmaru building, which at 197 metres is one of the tallest buildings in Marunouchi. Whether you're looking to grab a meal, a drink or a good view from the expansive terrace on the seventh floor, it's an excellent place to watch the sun go down over the city and the station skyline. Again, isn't this luxury to have a piece of pizza? Look at that, yep. with that view behind me. It's good, but maybe just, just cut the pizza. <laughs> just cut the pizza, I cut the pizza. A special job, just, okay. special job for a special boy. I must admit, what I've learned today is all the best bits of uh, the Tokyo Station area are hidden away in the skyscrapers surrounding the station. Each skyscraper is like its own city. But I understand you've got one last trick up your sleeve, one last place on our list today. What is it? The ultimate dating spot. And a success 100% guaranteed. <laughs> I think that's the most awkward sentence I've heard you say <laughs> all week. So there you have it guys, our list of things to do around the Tokyo Station area. Hopefully the next time you find yourself around here, you'll have some ideas on things to do. Eat, yep. drink, shop, buy, do. Um, Everything. Anything you'd like to add? Any closing comments, Ryotaro? Well, I mean, this is, I mean, like the ultimate like, dating spot. The like, ultimate dating spot. Yeah, if you're in, like, in Tokyo. And if you like propose to your girlfriend here, 100% success guaranteed, I yeah. guess. <laughs>
You heard it here first, 100%. I know someone's going to watch this, actually attempt it, and then they're going to say no, it's going to be all your fault. Anyway, but for now, no matter where you might be watching from, out there in the big wide world, as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next Thank time. You. To do it, to do it all over, over again. <laughs> to do it all over again. Would you like a cup of tea? That's the word all the British people use.